Hi everyone, Vacha here from Recording Studio 9 and thanks for joining me again today. And today I'm continuing my review of Presonus' latest audio USB audio interface, the Studio 1824. Today we are looking at the physical functions of this USB audio interface. But before I continue, I have to make a correction. In my last video, when I was unboxing it, I mentioned that it supports the DSP FET channels built in. Unfortunately, because when I was researching, I was looking at the Studio 192, which is the next level up from 1824, does support the FET channel, where this one, Studio 1824, doesn't support it. I do apologize uh, about that mistake that I made. It's just an oversight. I was excited as I was unboxing. I didn't realize that actually um, there are two different units. This is about $6.99 Australian dollars, where the Studio 192 is about $1,400. So it's twice the price. That's why you get the FAT channel and DSP built in. I hope you forgive me for that. But let's get on and let's see what this one can do. So at the front, we get input one and input two, which are combination XLR and jack inputs. The XLRs, you can actually use microphones, whether dynamic or condenser. And the jacks are by default instrument input, high impedance uh, connections. So you can plug your guitar, uh, your electric guitar or bass guitar directly into here without any DI box. And with a flick of a switch right here, they turn into line level inputs as well. Next to them, we have the eight gain knobs for eight the inputs on board. And you'll be able to adjust the gains. Unlike the audio box, these ones are smooth. They don't have a click effect. Whereas you're adjusting the input gain, you can use the display here of the eight inputs levels of the signal so you can adjust it so that you're not clipping it's not too loud and not too soft uh, so uh, it's really great to have that display right next to it and on the display we have four buttons one which is 48 volts by pressing the 48 volt button it provides phantom power to all of its eight inputs that is something to consider which i will discuss in a minute and then the other button, which is the line one and two, that's the button where you press these two inputs become line level inputs for the jack inputs. And on the other side, we have a mute switch, which mutes the speakers, the main left and right output. And then at the bottom, we have the mono switch, which monos the left and right speaker outputs, which is really great one to mute so that when you are recording, you can press the mute button and you will get uh, speakers muted and you can do recording with a microphone without adjusting levels and volumes and then the mono switch is a good way to actually check your mix without affecting everything else because that only mutes the output the left and right main output and you can actually hear the click every time you click on it uh, the relay switching um, which is uh, which is really good and next to that we have nice big volume again very smooth and two stereo outputs they're quite powerful as well independent volume and then you can adjust the settings in the uh, universal control what signal gets fed to them now i should also mention that the headphone app one is also parallel with app one and two same as the main output and the headphone output number two is parallel with outputs three and four where in audio box it was seven and eight which was really confusing so this way you've got the main outputs going to the speakers uh, as up one and two and the second headphone three and four and then you have five six seven and eight as spare outputs at the back and next to that the lovely big nice power button and now on the flip side we actually have the remaining six inputs uh, of uh, input three to eight and they are combination XLR jack inputs so they take microphone and line level inputs 
followed by the eight outputs, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. They are TRS balanced outputs. Next to that is your main output, which as I mentioned, is also parallel with outputs one and two. So anything that you send to outputs one and two will also go to the main outputs one and two. And outputs three and four also are parallel with the headphone output. Next to that, we have the RCA SPDIF digital stereo in and out. Then we have the ADAT inputs, which will give you additional eight inputs and outputs. We also have the BNC connector, which is word clock output. So you can use this as a master clock generator for any other devices you are trying to connect to and synchronize. Then we have five pinned in MIDI input and output, the USB connection, which is USB 2, and the power connection at the back. Now the unit itself feels solid and rugged. It's all metal everywhere. I don't feel any plastic. Even the knobs, I believe they're, they feel aluminium. So they're not, they don't feel plastic. So um, I can be corrected on that, but they definitely feel aluminium, nice and solid. It's well built. It's definitely a great upgrade from Audiobox 1818 because of its some of the functionalities available at the front, especially the second headphone output and the VU meters of input signals and the output signal. Now the other advantage and the upgrade from the Audiobox 1818 to Studio 1824 is at the USB connection, even though it's still USB 2.0, um, it does provide simultaneous 18 channels into your DAW and 18 channels out of your DAW, it's at 192 kilohertz as well, which is an improvement over the 96 kilohertz of the audio box. The 18 inputs into your DAW, eight coming from the unit itself, plus eight from the ADAT connection with an external unit, and the two from the SPD-IF. Now, as I mentioned earlier, about the 48 volts phantom power. When you turn it on, that provides 48 volts phantom power to all of its eight inputs. That should be fine in most cases. So if you even have one or two microphone plugged in here, then you'll be able to use uh, condenser microphones to plug into any of its inputs. However, though dynamic microphones are not affected by the phantom power, they will still work you have to watch out for if you are recording with ribbon microphones. Now, personally myself, I don't have any ribbon microphones, so it's not going to cause me any problem if I ever need to connect um, my drum microphone set into the uh, Studio 1824, because I normally connect it to my Behringer mixer here, which has individual 48 volts for each channel, so I can select it. But if you have ribbon microphones, and usually ribbon microphones are really great for room overheads over the drum, you gotta watch out for because that could cause a problem and burn your ribbon microphones. So in that situation, you're much better off using the dynamic microphones like SM57s and similar dynamic microphones, and maybe your overheads if you're using condenser pencil small di uh, diaphragm pencil microphones that it can supply the phantom power and the rest are all dynamic. So that is something you watch out for. Not sure why they would have done that. In audio box you had, a, you had actually two switches where you would switch the bank one to four phantom power and the second switch would switch the banks uh, five to eight. To, so you can have two different sections, one with phantom power, one without, where this one all eight of them get the phantom power. So just um, watch out for that. Well, I hope this was helpful. If it was, make sure you give me the thumbs up and, uh, and subscribe so that way in my next video when I uh, put this in on my rack, connect it to my system and test it out and make a new video, you'll be able to follow up and find out about the universal control driver what you can do with it and how it actually performs, the sound quality and my you know, feedback and review of the whole 
process. So until then, thanks for watching and have a great time making music. I'm just going to put this in the rack and screw it on and uh, make it all ready. Cheerio!